What is the best Disney attraction here at Hollywood Studios? Well, I'm going to rank all of them. 19. Scientifically. I'm here at Hollywood Studios to figure out what the best attraction here is in the entirety of all of Hollywood Studios. Now stick around. This ranking might actually surprise you. Probably anger you. What about both? I'm <laughs> so excited and scared. There are five different ways we're going to judge each attraction. Theming and experience. Ride system and tech. Nostalgia and popularity. Accessibility. And must-do-ness. Now, I'm going to rate each one of those on a scale between one to five. One being the worst, five being the absolute amazingness. Yes, let's go. Starting off our list, number 19. Vacation Fun is an animated short that is playing here at Hollywood Studios, where you can basically go sit in the theater and watch a, an animated short that is exclusive here to Hollywood Studios. Theming and overall experience. It is literally just a movie theater, but they say it's a movie theater, so at least they're at least they're not lying to you. For overall experience, and uh, just because you can go sit in the AC somewhere and the seating is comfortable, I'll give it a one. There is no ride vehicle because it is just a screening of a short, but we can talk about tech. There is no tech. <laughs> it's just a video screen. I mean, it, they're playing a movie. There's nothing really special about it. It's just a video screen because technically a video screen is kind of tech. I'll give it a one. Nostalgia and popularity. It's not very popular uh, because people don't want to just sit in the theater and watch a cartoon. I'll throw a couple points because it is, you know, you're, it is the Fab Five. You got Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, all, all that jazz, Donald. Uh, but so, so, so you'll have a little bit of nostalgia in there because it's just those characters but it's the newer animation so it might kind of rub you the wrong way or catch you off guard so just for those reasons nostalgia popularity I'll give it a two and this is where it finally ranks high accessibility uh, it's a theater it's wheel it's it's definitely able to accessible it's wheelchair accessible uh, it's got comfy seats it's not gross bench seating and it's air conditioned. It's accessible. It's family friendly. I mean, how else can you? What else? What else can you? Where else can you go wrong? There, there's not really much you can do with that. So as far as accessibility goes, five out of five. Good for you. And must do ness. Is it a must do? No. Part of the short is a montage of the other shorts you could watch at home. If you want to get out of the sun, I'll give it a one. Which gives Vacation Fun an overall score of ten. Ten. Starting up low here, but we knew we were gonna do this. That was the point. Moving on up! Number 18, Alien Swirling Saucers. The theming is fine. It's uh, very bright and colorful, but I feel like we can do better. So for theming and overall experience, I'm gonna give it a two. Sorry, Fry Bucket. Now, ride vehicle and tech. The ride vehicle is cute because you got your, whoa, we are eternally grateful. Aliens who are fi trying to find their leader. Uh, so that's super cute. Uh, you're in like a little rocket ship. Ride vehicle is super cute. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a two. Nostalgia and popularity. Uh, this is actually not a super popular ride. Um, surprise, surprise. Uh, as far as nostalgia goes, the reason I will give it a couple points uh, is because they do have this fun, like electronic, uh, backing track, uh, like, you know, background music while the ride is going that plays fun songs like um, the electronic version of You've Got a Friend in Me, which is always fun. And, uh, but for nostalgia and, uh, and popularity, I'll give it a two. This ride is pretty accessible. Uh, it, you do have to be 32 inches to ride, which again, I was shocked. I thought uh, this seems like such like a easy ride that you could put a child on, but uh, you still gotta be 32 inches to ride. And if you're an ECV or it's something else, you have to be transferred to a wheelchair. So it's middle of the road accessible again. It feels, again, like accessible for most people, but there are still some stipulations, which is why, again, I'm gonna go middle of the road three. And I'm sure you guessed it, this is not on my must-do list. Uh, there are a bunch of other fun Toy Story things that you can do that you can reserve, Lightning Lane reservations for that I would be fine waiting in line with. Uh, I would not wait 30 minutes for this. Uh, uh, I wouldn't even wait 20. Uh, that's my own personal opinion. But however, for young ones and families, I do understand that, you know, these, this is important to have. For those reasons, I'm gonna give it a two.
number 17, Star Wars Launch Bay. Now inside Star Wars Launch Bay, you can see authentic props and costumes from the Star Wars franchise, as well as meet some of your favorite characters. The theming is very much like a dark convention center. Uh, it's, you know, a lot of carpets, dark walls, and uh, exhibit cases, if you will, glass cases for where the authentic movie props are. Theming isn't awesome, you know, because when you think of Star Wars, you're like, oh, I'm gonna go to space. Now, it's very con museum-y, convention-y, which is odd. Except when you get to the meet and greets, because the, uh, the meet and greet, like, the actual meet and greets themselves, they have really nice, like, backdrops and set pieces that you can take your pictures in front of with Chewbacca, Darth Vader, and BB-8. But again, we're not really including meet and greets into this list, so for theming alone, Alone, just because it's like a dark convention hall, I'm gonna give it a one. Now, because this is more of a walkthrough experience, uh, there's no ride vehicle, but as far as tech goes, there's not a lot of tech there either, other than uh, the screens in the queues uh, for meet and greets that give you fun trivia questions while you wait. And the only really interesting tech thing that happens is when you get to meet BB-8. There's not a lot of places you get to meet BB-8, and uh, obviously it's, it's a cool special effect, so that's pretty cool. So for BB-8 alone, really tech reasons, I'm giving it a two. Star Wars Launch Bay is not super popular. It is, uh, the, the, you know, the meet and greets can uh, be up to 30 to 45 minutes long, which is uh, pretty uh, either average to high for a meet and greet, but the actual Star Wars launch bay itself is not super uh, popular. However, if you do love the Star Wars franchise, there are some really interesting uh, movie props in there, costumes, figurines, and again, meeting those characters. If you love Star Wars, they're super nostalgic. So for those reasons, I'm giving nostalgia and popularity a three. It is accessible to all uh, wheelchair, differently able, the ECBs. It is very accessible. It's family friendly. The only reason I'm going to take a point away is because uh, in case there's, there's a lot of walking involved and if you need a place to sit down, you can't actually sit down. Uh, I mean, you, you can, but there's not a lot of places to sit down, so I'm going to take a point away for that. Uh, so accessibility-wise, that's a four. And when it comes to the things you must do, this would not be it. Uh, as much as I love Star Wars, there's a whole other land and it, even another, well, there's a whole other land and an attraction even before that land that are much more Star Warsy that will fill up your time. But if you love meet and greets and you want to actually sit there and talk to Darth Vader and BB-8 and Chewbacca, then fine. Go for it. Go for it. Star Wars Launch Bay is the place for you. For must, so for those reasons, must do, I'm gonna give it a two. This sounds harsh. I don't mean to be harsh. I'm just trying to do this scientifically. Like, just trying to give it to you straight. Number 16, Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. Here's where you can learn how to be a champion racer along with Lightning McQueen in this interactive show. The theming is fine. For those of you who aren't familiar with this building, where they're currently housing Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, uh, it's called Sunset Showcase, and this is where they do a lot of special events. So it's really a building that they put a bunch of curtains around, and they put a bunch of screens up, and they plop this giant, uh, animatronic car in the middle of it all with a bunch of like benches for seats. I'm gonna give it a two. Now because it's a show there's no ride vehicle but we can talk about the tech here for a second because the only reason really to come and see this show is this tech. It's this really cool animatronic Lightning McQueen that really I think only exists here. And yes, there are versions of it in uh, Disney's California Adventure, but this 10 minute standalone car situation where he's talking to you, he's giving you a little bit of a story, it's like wheels are burning, like it's really interesting. But I'm really impressed with the tech, so for the tech, I'm gonna give it a four just because of that animatronic car. It's the only reason to see it. Now this even feels like a pop-up situation, so for nostalgia, there's not going to be a lot of nostalgic qualities in there for you, uh, unless you grew up watching Cars, which it's very possible you may have, uh, but this, even then, like, it's not a retelling of Cars, it's just like, he's existing and teaching you guys how to be the next champion racer. It's not really a popular show either, uh, just because it's kind of hidden back here, not a lot of people know about it. So from a, from a popularity and nostalgic aspect, it's it's really not hidden it, so I'm gonna give it a one. Now it is accessible to all family, it's very family friendly, it is a show, there is seating for uh, differently abled, wheelchairs, ECVs, all the above. However, the one point why I'm gonna give it, uh, I'm gonna take away a point, because it's just these 
kind of uncomfortable benches again. I don't know why we always refer to benches, but here we are sitting again on benches. But for accessibility, it is accessible for all, so for that I'm going to give it a four. And this is not a must-do situation. It, it is in the AC, and I feel like kids would enjoy it. It's, it, you know, kind of mind-numbing. <laughs> so uh, for that I'll give it some points, but really it is not a must-do. This is not going to make or break your day at all. For those reasons, I'm going to give this a two. Giving Lightning McQueen Racing Academy an overall score of 13. 13! I want a race car, yeah. Number 15, Disney Junior Play and Dance. Uh, this is where you're gonna join a bunch of your Disney Junior friends in a musical celebration. The theming is like the inside of a family-friendly night on the town club. And I mean club, like, like raise the roof club. It is a, you know, a, formerly a theater space, so it's really, it's a stage and around, around you, like, is like to mask behind the scenes. There's like curtains and things like that. So, but for but for Disney Junior, I feel like there would be more whimsicalness, family friendliness, things like that. And it just seems like a, a club. So uh, for theme and overall experience, because it is rather chaotic in there, I'm going to give it a two. There are some really neat tech aspects to it. Uh, when I formally did Disney Junior Dance Party, and I was friends with Finn Fiesta. Uh, during our training, they did tell us that there were the same amount of moving lights inside Disney Junior Dance Party that there are moving lights in Fantasmic, which I, seems crazy to me. But I guess if you look at it, if you look at it all, I guess it does kind of make sense. So, uh, tech-wise, they must be doing something right. And of course, there's no ride vehicle because it is a show. But for, for a, a tech situation, it's it's we're doing okay. And it is, a, it is a really nice LED wall. So for that. For that, I'll give it a three. Now, nostalgia and popularity are interesting because if you've got a family, this is a great, you know, honest, it's a great place to let your kid run wild for a second. So it can get a little popular from time to time. But from a nostalgia aspect, uh, there's nothing really nostalgic about it. Uh, that's because uh, they try and update the characters. Like, so unless you're really up to date on the current Disney Junior happenings, it's not a lot of... Um, nostalgia involved but it is it can get popular from time to time with the families so for that reason I'm giving nostalgia and popularity a two it is very accessible for all families it is a show atmosphere obviously you still have to leave your strollers uh, outside but for wheelchairs ECBs it's all very uh, differently abled compatible which is great and again available for all families so um, but there is no seating other than in the very back, like there's like one or two benches in the very back for parents to kind of sit down. Other than that, if you want to sit down, uh, you kind of have to sit on the floor, which isn't ideal. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a four. And must do this, or if you do have a family, I'm sure it is great to... Hello! If you do have a family, I'm sure it is great to... Uh, let the kids run wild and dance a little bit. It's high energy, it's nice, and it's inside. So for the must-do, I'm giving it a two. Coming at number 14, Star Tours. On Star Tours, you are being given a tour through the galaxy when C-3PO ends up in the cockpit and things do not go as planned. As far as theming and overall experience goes, it feels like a galactic airport in a sense because you know these are tours that kind of go out so I totally get that vibe however once you get inside the actual ride vehicle it's, it's just kind of a box it's a box that shakes right that's how it's that's the with a screen that's the only thing that's a little tough for me so overall experience and theming theme which is pretty solid I'll give that a four but when it comes to ride vehicle and tech it is definitely a little outdated it is it is indeed exactly what it says it's a motion simulator attraction which means they're gonna put you in a box they're gonna put a video on the screen and they're gonna shake you around which motion sickness people beware it's it's very real especially on this attraction so for tech and and ride vehicle it's definitely not the best so for that i'm gonna give it a two nostalgia and popularity is so hard because i feel like i'm like i'm constantly comparing it to galaxy's edge or you know anything close to that so nostalgia yeah 
it's nostalgic in the sense of this is very much old school MGM Studios. This is what this is kind of how it all started for, for uh, Star Wars being here at the parks. And yeah, you get to see C-3PO and R2-D2, which is awesome, and you're flying through different lands. But again, it's on a screen. So uh, and popularity, it's actually really middle of the road. You'll always find it usually around a 30-minute wait, which is not too long, but definitely longer than a lot of people would wait. So I'll give that a three. It is accessible to most families. It is 40 inch height requirement. And if you're in an ECV, you must transfer to a wheelchair. All that included, let's say, we'll give accessibility a three. Now, unfortunately, this is not on my must do list. Uh, I, this is not a ride that I, I feel drawn to just because I think there are other Star, Star Wars things that would be, that I'd rather wait in line for a little bit longer or that I would experience more here at the park. Uh, but if it's got a short wait, I will always do it, um, because why not? So for those reasons, must do, it's a two. Giving Star Tours an overall score of 14. Nailing it. Rock and roll, baby. Number 13, Beauty and the Beast live on stage. Now, Beauty and the Beast Live on stage is a retelling of the tale as old as time. So as far as theming goes, the entire theater isn't really themed. It is just like a Hollywood Bowl style theater. But as far as on stage, the sets and the costumes, it's very, you know, true to the Beauty and the Beast, like the animated movie. It is, it is very tried and true animated Beauty and the Beast, if that makes sense. So the theming is fine. It could use some updating because it is a tad dated. So if on a scale of one to five, theming, it's about a three. Now let's talk about the ride system in tech. There's no ride system, it's a show. So we're talking about specifically tech. There is nothing really high tech about this at all, other than some light fog uh, and some curtains being pulled. It is very theater. If you were to take the costumes and the sets and the props and take them to a completely di different stage, like you would have the exact same experience. There's not a lot of tech involved. But just because, you know, there's some lights and some fog, and a, I'll give it a one. One. Because it is tried and true Beauty and the Beast, it is very nostalgic for a lot of people, and it is very popular. Fun fact, this is still one of the most highest ranked shows on Disney property. People love it. So for popularity and nostalgia factor, I'm giving it a four. Accessibility, it is for all families. Uh, it, it's very family friendly and for differently abled uh, people, wheelchairs or ECVs, there is plenty of seating for them both in the front as well as some uh, different wheelchair seating, uh, different areas of the theater. So it's accessible for everybody. So for that, wait a minute, it is, it does not have the most comfortable seating. So it's may, maybe, uh, you know, so that, that could pose an issue. You know what, so for accessibility, I'm also gonna give it a four. And for must do this, this is a tough one because I will always say hashtag live entertainment is important, but 25 to 30 minutes, it is a time suck. It's gonna take up a lot of your time and is it necessarily worth it? I'm gonna give your must do this a two. Not bad, 14's not bad. I would see a show rated 14. I love this show. Okay, moving on. Number 12. Rock and roller coaster? Wow, I'm shocked this is not higher up on the list, but I mean, <laughs> we are, we, I guess this is why it's scientific, scientifically rating it. Ah. Now, rock and roller coaster is a high speed coaster where you zoom off in a stretch limo, rocking out to Aerosmith, because you're trying to, you got backstage tickets and you're trying to, backstage passes and you're trying to make it to his concert. This is gonna get a little controversial here because I think the queue is themed better than the actual attraction itself. The queue is like this, uh, it's as if you are in a, uh, um, a recording studio, a record label company, they call it G-Force Records. And then, then you get on the actual attraction and it's as if everything became fluorescent and warped and now you're, now you're, now you're in car cartoon land. It's very, like when I say cartoon land, it's just very, it's just different. Everything is in the studio and then the alley is so real and then you zoom off in this limo and it becomes this like, everything is rock and roll whimsical, which is odd to me. Because I think the queue is so well themed and the overall experience is a lot of fun, I'm gonna give that a three. Now ride vehicle and tech. 
it's it is just your basic coaster that goes upside down. The thing that's interesting about this is that it does have a really cool launch right at the beginning of it. The three, two, one, and it just shoots you off right from the go immediately into your into your first uh, full loop. So that is uh, that is a cool tech aspect. But again. Nothing special about this other than it, it is just a really cool roller coaster. So for those reasons alone, I'm going to give it a three. I think we're going to do another middle of the road for this too because it's not there's nothing nostalgic about this. Uh, unless unless you love Aerosmith, but we're talking about nostalgic and popularity. is a very popular attraction. Again, passing passing through it, it's 110 minutes right now. Again, it is still pretty early. Um, pretty early on in the day. It's 110 minutes. Very, um, very popular attraction. So because it's not super nostalgic, but it is popular, go middle of the road, gonna give this one a three again. Now this ride isn't super accessible. You have to be 48 inches to ride. And uh, if you're in an ECV, you have to transfer to a wheelchair. In the wheelchair, you have to transfer to the actual ride vehicle. Uh, you know, so lot, lots of movement. It's not super accessible. Uh, and it is a full roller coaster that goes upside down. But they really do try and make it as um, accessible as possible for what it is, uh, but it just wasn't built that way. So for accessibility, I'm gonna give it a two. And for your must do this category, I, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I, I really think that if, if you're able to ride this attraction, it's really your only thrill coaster here at Hollywood Studios. Yes, they have Slinky Dog Dash, uh, but that's more of a family coaster. This is more of a high speed thrill coaster, a uh, lot of adrenaline. So. For those reasons, I'm gonna give the must-do factor category a four. It's only 10 points away from 25. If you had been more accessible, maybe I would've given you a higher score. Number 11, Toy Story Mania. And Toy Story Mania is a Midway-style 3D shooting game. So let's break this down category by category. First things first, the theming here is intense. And I and I do mean intense. Even in the queue, you're walking by like board games, like like the actual like the the, the board you would play itself, you know, like uh, Candyland. Giant Mr. Potato Head is like a carnival barker. This really cool animatronic that like sometimes will single you out if you're being kind of crazy. The sun came out. Got to put on my sunglasses now. Even on the ride, most of it is screened, but as you're transferring between screen to screen, you'll see this like giant barrel of monkeys and different things like that. It's uh, not as set heavy as something like maybe like a Ratatouille or something like uh, uh, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, but uh, the theming is still pretty solid. Now we've definitely seen a better theming, which is why I made I might not give it a full five out of five, but for theming, I'm gonna give it a four. The ride vehicle is kind of interesting. There are four people and you're back to back because uh, basically there'll be a screen in front of you and a screen behind you and on your screen there'll be different, you know, versions of the game that you're playing, whether it be a volcano, whether it be like a saloon style game, and you're pulling a string which is basically your cannon which will fire uh, at the things that you're pointing at. It is 3D, it is mostly screens, which is why it's not the most high-tech thing, I, you, know, you know, I don't love screens always, but it is really fun and interactive, for, so for that reason I'm um, giving it a three. Now, if you grew up with Toy Story like I did, it's definitely, there's, there's a big nostalgia factor here because they've, they've got the music playing, all of your favorite characters are involved. So because it is middle of the road popularity and the nostalgia, if you didn't grow up with Toy Story, it might not be as nostalgic, but for me, it definitely is. So uh, I'm gonna give middle of the road, we'll say three for nostalgia popularity as well. I think I'm gonna go middle of the road for uh, accessibility as well because it is family friendly. Uh, you don't really need, uh, you don't really, there's not really a height requirement for you know, uh, young ones to ride the ride. Obviously you do have to be accompanied by an adult, but if you're in an ECV or differently able, you will have to transfer into a wheelchair in order to ride this attraction. So for that, I'm also gonna give accessibility a three. I don't know what it is about Toy Story Mania. It's it feels very middle of the road, just as a just as an attraction, uh, because it's a lot of screens. It's fun. It's like a, it's like an arcade game. So very middle of the road. It's it is not always a must do on my list. However, when I do do it, I always go, oh, I forget how much fun this was. So go on middle of the road again. Three, which gives Toy Story Mania an overall score of sixteen. Not bad Toy Story Mania. L little middle of the road, but not bad. All right, it's officially time for top 10. Starting with, for the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration. 
Now for theming, it is the Hyperion Theater, so it is a full theatrical setting, but they do have these really interesting projections on the walls that make the walls look like Arendelle. Uh, overall experience, it is basically um, group karaoke with some Disney celebrities. So for theme and overall experience, I'm gonna give it a three. Now, because it's a theater show, there's no ride vehicle involved, so we'll talk about the tech. And the tech is pretty simple. For the most part, it's really just one huge, giant screen that plays sections of the movie Frozen, uh, because they do retell the uh, story in a, in a fun, quick way, and hence the storytellers. It also shows the lyrics of the songs, so that way you're able to sing along if you don't know all the lyrics. There are one or two kind of cool special effects, like when Elsa comes out and there's this snow. So there are some, you know, one or two special effects, but not a lot of high-tech things here. Mostly just fog and a cool LED screen. Uh, so for that, we're gonna give it a two. Sure, there can be some Frozen nostalgia in there if you're a huge Frozen fan. If Frozen's number one fan, yes. There's a, there's a, very, there's a little bit of nostalgia because they're, re they're really retelling the movie in a fun, silly way. But if you're not a huge Frozen fan, nostalgia is, is probably not gonna be there for you. But it is pretty popular. And I've always been able to find a seat, but it's usually a full house. So you see what I mean? It's like middle of the road there. So I, I can always find a seat, but it's always pretty crowded. So again, uh, three. It is very accessible. It is very family friendly. It is ECV, wheelchair, a differently abled, friendly, and it's not gross bench seating, like steel bench seating. It is nice, comfy theater seating. I've also never had a bad seat before. I sat back and see everything great. Sit in the middle, sit in the side. You can see everything great. It's very accessible. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a five. Now, is it a must do? It's a pretty long show, kind of a time suck. Uh, it's around 30 minutes, around 35 minutes when they do their holiday, when they add the holiday songs attached to it. But it is a super fun show. Uh, the, uh, the storytellers are hilarious. Uh, if you love the music of Frozen, it is a Frozen sing-along celebration. And it is inside, always a plus. So for those reasons, must do, I'm gonna give it a three. All right, we're in the top 10 officially. Let's go. Number nine, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. Now, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular is a behind the scenes look of how stunts are created for movies, specifically for the movie Indiana Jones. Now the actual venue itself is a stadium arena style situation. I mean, again, we're talking about these, those awful plastic, not plastic, they're like metal benches. Just rough, man. But the sets are really well put together, uh, and it, it is really cool. And uh, the theme of just, they have the directors and the cameraman, the cameramen uh, and women always around, just like pretending that they're like, you know, fixing things on the spot. It's very cool. Uh, it's a great stunt show. So for theming, because the show is awesome, but the, uh, but the theming of the actual theater itself is just medium. We'll go middle of the road, we'll, we'll give it a three. Now there is no ride vehicle, but there's a lot of tech involved. There's the special effects, there's fire. I mean, uh, tech that we don't even see. Uh, the huge rolling ball, I mean, there's so many, there's so many special effects, but also practical effects. The tech is awesome, but a lot of the tech is dated. And a lot of what makes up the show are the really great stunts that everyone is doing. So it's more physical than tech. So for those reasons, I'm gonna give it a three as well. If you love Indiana Jones and Indiana Jones makes you feel nostalgic, uh, this might this this might be the thing that makes you feel nostalgic. The reason it makes me feel nostalgic is because it has, it reminds me of the of the good old days at MGM Studios where they were trying to teach us all about how movies worked, about how movie magic worked, and it is a very very popular show. I've never not seen it. Has seen that giant stadium just completely full. With that all being said, I do understand that Indiana Jones might not be for everybody, and the stunts are not to be performed at home. They're all done by trained professionals, so I understand if there's a little, little weary, weariness about that. So for that reason alone, I'm also going to give it a three. Accessibility, much like Beauty and the Beast live on stage, it's all there. It's a huge theater. They have uh, seats for uh, ECVs, wheelchair, differently abled, etc. It is the show itself is technically family friendly however I'm gonna knock off a point because of those awful awful metal benches so for accessibility giving it a four and finally 
is it a must do? It is definitely a 30 to 35 minute show, which could create a little bit of a time suck. However, I do think it's probably one of the most epic shows you're gonna see at Hollywood Studios. So I definitely recommend it, which is why I'm giving it a three on must do's. Giving Indiana Jones an overall score of 16. That's not bad, 16 is not bad. He's looking at me with that whip. I gave you a 16, my guy. Don't, don't be angry with me. Coming up on number eight, Slinky Dog Dash. The theming and overall experience, because it is a pretty smooth coaster, it is great. I'm gonna give it a four. Now the ride vehicle, the ride vehicle is shaped like Slinky Dog, which is pretty cool, but it, other than that, it is a standard roller coaster, family style roller coaster, lap bar kind of situation. It's a lap bar because it doesn't go upside down but it does have some twists and turns. The only cool tech thing about this ride is that there are two launches. You do get launched twice, uh, and it is a family-friendly launch, is what I'll say. So, because you do get two launches, and the ride vehicle is super cute, it, but it's not super tech-heavy, we'll give that a three. If you love Toy Story as much as I do, uh, and you love seeing the fun characters, especially Wheezy at the end, I think that kind of takes it over the top for me. I love, I love Toy Story 2. It is a very popular ride. This is the only family-friendly coaster. Uh, it doesn't go upside down, and that is attractive to a lot of families. So uh, typically, you won't find it being any shorter, even on a slow day, than a 60-minute wait. Uh, really, right now, it was like 120, 130, or something like that, and it's a busy day today. So definitely popular and nostalgic for some people, not all people, depending on your feelings about Toy Story. So for that, I'll, I will also give it a three. Now it's not as accessible as I thought it was. I thought like, you know, because it's a family friendly coaster, uh, you know, as long as you were with an adult, you'd be fine. But no, it's still, you still have to be 38 inches to ride this vehicle. And uh, you still have to uh, uh, transfer uh, to a wheelchair as well. I will say the ride vehicles are more roomy than your typical family friendly coasters, like the Barnstormer, which is just, uh, so small and I should probably not be a ride, allowed to ride that ride as a 6'3 man. So because it's mostly accessible but there are a few hiccups along the way, I'm still gonna give it a three. And for must-do attractions, I really think this is a must-do. Uh, it's fun, it's so Disney. Like, when, when, you know when I say, I mean, this is Disney, it's very Disney, it's family friendly. The, the, the characters are all there. Uh, and it, it launches twice. Uh, it's really, really fun. I, I really think you'll enjoy it. So for all those reasons, I'm gonna give it a four. Number seven, the Tower of Terror. Boo -boo -boo! Now, the Tower of Terror is a thrilling drop tower ride that plunges you right into the twilight zone on a haunted elevator. The theming here at the Tower of Terror is by far some just amazing, amazing theming work done by Imagineers. I mean, literally, the cobwebs in the hotel lobby are strategically placed. I mean, there is a, there is a routine on how to dust the cobwebs, like literally dust the remove the dust from the cobwebs. It's very interesting. From the library pre-show, even to the boiler room, it's dark. You truly feel like you've been just uh, immersed into this back in the day Hollywood hotel that is haunted and terrifying and Twilight zone -y. Theming wise, I'm gonna give it a four. Ride vehicle and tech. The ride vehicle is actually not what you would expect it is. It is definitely an elevator and it is a drop tower situation, but it's more complex than drop tower situation because you're not just being dropped, you're actually being pulled quicker than you would be dropped, which is, which is what creates the um, stomach in your throat effect. But it is just a box with seats. For ride vehicle and tech, I'm gonna give it a three. It is a very popular ride. Uh, no, just walking up to it today, it was 120 minutes and it's only 10.30. So it is definitely a very popular ride. People love it. But when it comes to uh, nostalgia, if you weren't aware of old school MGM Studios or the Twilight Zone, it just feels like a haunted 
hotel. Uh, so, for, so which doesn't really equate to nostalgia. But if you loved Twilight Zone and you loved old school MGM Studios, of course, you're going to love the nostalgia here. So we're, we're aiming middle of the road here. So for nostalgia and popularity, I'm going to give it a three. For accessibility, you do have to be 40 inches to ride, but there are uh, some uh, elevators uh, with the, that, that are wheelchair friendly, but you do have to transfer if you're in an ECB, you have to transfer into a wheelchair. So it's kind of accessible. Again, really aiming for the middle of the road here. You do have to transfer to a wheelchair. It's not totally family friendly, not everybody can ride, so it's not super accessible. Uh, and often is a pretty long line. So uh, for accessibility, it's the middle of the road here again. We're gonna go three. And for must do's, this, this is a big one for me. There aren't many thrill rides here in Hollywood Studios, so if you're a thrill seeker, which I am, uh, and I, a lot of us are, I definitely think this attraction is a must-do. So for my must-do-ness, I'm gonna give it a four, which means the overall score for Tower of Terror is 17. I feel like that makes sense. 17 is a good number for that because a lot of people, even like even people that are close to me, like, I can't do Tower of Terror, it's too much for me. But that 17 makes sense. We're doing it. We're, we're nailing this. Let's go. Number six. What? Muppet Vision 3D. Wow. This made it pretty, uh, pretty high up on the list. I can't say I'm surprised, but I'm also impressed. Now, I'm actually pretty impressed with the theming, specifically in the pre-show. They've got all these really fun gags that really believes you're entering a Muppet theater. And even in the actual theater itself, while it may just look like a theater, it does, it does feel like this is where the Muppet show would have taken place. The overall experience, this is classic Muppets, right? You've got Fozzie trying to create kind of cheesy, cringy 3D effects. Kermit's just trying to keep the peace. Miss Piggy is just diva-ing out. Uh, and overall experience, it's not just 3D. You've got animatronics. You've even got a, a, a live character that runs out. Uh, and it happens 360 degrees around you, above you. But it is a little dated. So with all of that being said, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Now, there's not really a right vehicle because it is just a show. But as far as tech goes, it's simple, but there are a lot of elements to it. When I say a lot of elements, I just mean there are a lot of tech elements. I mean, there's fog. There's... Um, the, anima the animatronic penguins, there's there's the uh, Statler and Waldorf and, and Bean Bunny in the balconies. Uh, there's a lot of different, t oh, there's uh, the Swedish chef behind you, like spoiler alert, Swedish chef is behind you uh, and the 3D and, and even the projections on the walls and the uh, ceiling, a lot of different elements. So for this, we'll say three out of five. If you love the Muppets as much as I do, nostalgia is a huge factor here. However, from a popularity standpoint, it's not a very popular attraction. For example, some of the attractions here at Hollywood Studios today are 180 minutes long. Muppet Vision 3D is only 15 minutes. That's a win in my book. But for the purposes of science today, we'll say for popularity and nostalgia, we'll go three. It is a theater, so it is accessible for all. They have differently abled and wheelchair and uh, ECB parking available. They have the subtitles features. They, they've, they've got it all here. So definitely high on the accessibility factor. And they've even got nice, comfortable seats, which is awesome. But in order to get the full effect, you have to wear the 3D glasses and with different eye visions and different things like that. I know that's not always possible. So for those reasons, I'm going to give accessibility factor a four. But is it a must do? It is a little bit of a time suck. Once you get into the building, out of the building, with the pre-show and everything, you're looking at about 25 minutes, which for me is worth it because it's really great to get out of the sun. I'm actually entertained. I'm actively being engaged with all the things around me. Super worth it for me. But I understand if you're not a Muppet fan and that there are that the time suck is hard, I get that. So for those reasons, I will give the must-do-ness a three. Now our top five countdown begins, starting with number five, Walt Disney Presents. What? This is in the top, well, I, I get it, but all right, let's explain. Theming is fine, it's very, museum-y, and that's, that's exactly what this is. It is a tribute, it is a museum uh, to all things Walt Disney and their humble beginnings and Walt Dis and Disneyland. It's very museum-y, uh, which 
is fine and it makes sense. Middle of the road, we'll give it a three. Now, it is a walkthrough experience, which means there is no ride vehicle, but we'll talk about tech specifically. There is not a lot of tech involved in this uh, because it is a walkthrough, ex a walkthrough experience. So I've tried to um, judge it as such that the tech inside, meaning like the old tech that we are viewing is still pretty cool. Like the multi-plane camera, the moments with uh, Mr. Lincoln, like that animatronic, all of those things are uh, are older tech. Again, it's not like special effects that are being used in there, but it's older tech. So I will judge it accordingly because there is still technically tech in there that you are viewing, but not experiencing, does that make sense? So for tech, middle of the road, give it a three. Now, nostalgia and popularity. This is a pretty popular uh, kind of walkthrough attraction. People seem to really enjoy it. I think they really just love learning about the early days of Disneyland for some reason, which is awesome. Always, that's important. But the nostalgia is heavy here because it's literally, this is a, a time capsule. That's what this is. There's so much nostalgia in it because I guarantee you, you were, something in here will click for you just as a human and as, and as an individual. So pure nostalgia in here. This is five out of five nostalgic. Now it is family friendly. It's accessible for all ages. Also definitely abled, uh, wheelchair accessible. The only reason I'm going to take off one point is because it, it does get down some pretty like close quarters, you know, like like the hallways are very narrow and you're trying to weave around turns, so it's definitely not wide open spaces in there, uh, which is why I'm going to rate accessibility as a four. And when it comes to when it comes to the must do ness. I'm gonna have to go pretty high because, again, I can't stress this enough, it's always important to uh, pay tribute to how this all started. This didn't just pop up one day. It, it was all started by a mouse, but first then there was a rabbit, but first then there was a man, you know what I mean? And it's a great walkthrough experience. I, I, I learn something new every time I go in there. So for the must-do experience, I'm, I'm gonna give this a four. It's, it's an easy walkthrough experience, gives you a chance in the AC, and you learn something about how this place started, four, all the way. Number four, Smuggler's Run. On Smuggler's Run, you actually get to enter the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, and it is an interactive video game. Theming is awesome. Theme and overall experience. Theming is really, really, I mean, just look around. It, the theming is just ridiculous. Even before you get to the cockpit, you, you are inside the Millennium Falcon, and it's exactly what it looks like in the movie. The theme is awesome, and the overall experience is really cool because we're actually controlling everything that happens within the Millennium Falcon. So for overall experience and theming, definitely five out of five. Brilliant. Ride vehicle and tech are also really, really, really awesome. My one complaint is that it, it's just a, it's a video screen in front of the, you know, Obviously, how would they be able to travel? I, I get all the things, but you know, screens are, are still screens. So far, so for ride vehicle and tech, we're gonna give a four. Now this does really feel like you've entered the world of Star Wars. You're in your own Star Wars movie. If you've ever wanted to fly the Millennium Falcon, this is your chance to, it's your chance to fly the Millennium Falcon. So if that's always been your dream, the nostalgia is real. But so is the popularity factor. Now it's still nowhere as popular as Rise of the Resistance, but it is pretty popular. Right now, it is about a about a hundred minute wait. Again, it's a busy day, but it's about a hundred minute wait. So it's very popular. People love it. The only reason this is not a, not a five out of five is because if you're not a fan of Star Wars, maybe this is not going to do it for you. So for nostalgia and popularity, we'll give it another four. It is very much accessible for all families, differently abled, all the above. The only thing is that there is, you know, it, 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 the whole thing does does shake. So if any kind of motion sickness whatsoever and it is a screen be prepared just for a little bit of motion sickness so it's middle of the road acceptable because there's it is some tight spaces in there as well so know that as well so okay so middle of the road disability for most families uh we'll go three is it a must-do attraction must do -ness. i think it is a great attraction However, it is a fairly quick attraction, and the thing that takes us over the top is really the theming. It is just a video screen interactive game. So, must do this, three. Which gives Smuggler's Run an overall score of 19. Great job. Tilda Spire, Millennium Falcon, you, Honda Renaka, 
you rascal you we've made it it's officially time for top three top three best attractions here in hollywood studios here we go starting with number three mickey and minnie's runaway railway now on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, you burst into a cartoon world with Mickey and Minnie starring Mickey and Minnie on this wacky train trip, theming an overall experience. Starting with the queue, I think it tells exactly the story it's supposed to tell theming wise. You are there for a movie premiere, right? You're here for a movie premiere. And the theming of the actual attraction is really unique. It really feels like you're in a two dimensional world. They do really do a good job but I do miss great movie ride. Uh, I won't hold that against them. But overall experience and theming, I'm gonna give it a four. Now the ride vehicle is a trackless train. Tech is surprisingly simple, which makes it advanced. I think the best thing that really demonstrates this is the is one of the very, uh, second to last scene where everything is going wrong. You're in this factory and all of a sudden, just a quick couple movements of these 2D, uh, these 2D props, you're in a completely different space and environment. But because it is super simple, I mean, I, I'm impressed by it, but also I'm not gonna give it a full five, so uh, we'll go four for that as well. The nostalgia factor is definitely pretty high because I mean, the Fab Five, they're, they're there, they're sensational. You know, they're, they're all there. There's not really another attraction that does that, so that's that's very cool. So nostalgia is high there. It was also a pretty popular ride because it is fairly new, it, it is in high demand, and it's family friendly. So. Uh, it's family friendly, but it's kind of thrilling, so uh, it is in high demand. So for those reasons, from a popularity aspect and nostalgia aspect, I'm also going to give it a four. We're going four heavy on this one. It is accessible for all families. There, uh, there is not a height requirement listed, so uh, definitely fr uh, family friendly. It is also wheelchair accessible, so that is a bonus. Just because you might have to transfer out of an ECB or whatever, all, all that jazz, I'm not going to give it a full five for accessibility. So. Give that a four as well. Wow, four heavy. Finally, must do this. I love this attraction. I think it is definitely a must do. Family friendly, it's new, it features all of your Disney pals. Uh, the tech is really uh, innovative and unique. So for those reasons, I'm gonna give it a four. Four, baby, four, all the, four across the board. Number two, Rise of the Resistance. This is where you're gonna find yourself in the middle of a battle between uh, the First Order and the Resistance. First things first is the theming. This is the best themed attraction, I think, in all of Disney World. The queue itself is really a part of the attraction. I mean, where does the queue start and the ride end? So for, that, for, so, so for those reasons alone, theming and overall experience, five out of five. When it comes to the ride vehicle and the tech elements, the ride vehicle is a trackless ride vehicle and there aren't many of those here at Disney World yet. You even have a droid at the front of your ride vehicle that's controlling your vehicle to where it wants to go. There are even different ride systems. So there's a trackless ride system, uh, there's an elevator, there's a little drop tower. However, the reason I'm gonna knock down a point is because it does break down a lot. It's a lot of breakdowns. So for that, for those reasons, I'm gonna give it a four. Talk about nostalgia. This is literally putting you inside of a Star Wars movie. You love Star Wars, you always wanted to be in a galaxy far, far away. This is the way to do it, even from a popularity standpoint. An e-ticket attraction, it is probably the longest wait on Disney World property, like by far, like across all four parks, two water parks, it is the longest wait. Right now it's currently 180 minutes. And it's not even a new attraction, it's been open for a while. For those reasons, I'm gonna give nostalgia and uh, popularity five out of five. It is pretty accessible, it is family friendly, there are some, you know, sharp turns and it can get scary at times because Kylo friend that man is scary. But there is a 40 inch height requirement and if you're in an ECV or a wheelchair you will have to transfer. So for all of that I'm gonna give it a three. But as far as must do this goes this is it man. This is the one. I, do whatever you can. Get up early. Do it all. Do what you can because this five out of five that's what I'm gonna give this for as a must do scale because that's just how Unique it is, I guarantee you, you're not gonna experience anything else like this. Rise of the Resistance, super, super awesome. Okay, woo, number two.
Well, that was number two. Th- what is number one? Okay. All right. I feel, I'm feeling a twist. Maybe not. I don't know. Feeling a twist. All right. What's our number one? It's Fantasmic. <laughs> Fantasmic is an outdoor arena show that brings Mickey's dreams to life in this nighttime spectacular. Now, when it comes to theming, it is a just a big stadium theater show. Uh, you know, we're talking about the hard silver benches. Um, the only thing about the show that I've never quite understood is the mountain. Why is there a mountain? As far as overall experience, like, because again, we're talking about theming and experience. There's so much that goes into this, the special effects. The, the spectacularness of it all, of meaning the fireworks and, and the, the puppets and everything that goes into it, almost every form of media that Disney has other than animatronics. I don't think there's any animatronics in this version of Fantasmic. And just because of the mountain not making sense to me, I'm gonna give theming and overall experience a four. Everything that we could think of tech-wise from a, from a theater atmosphere, yeah, it, it's, it's in there. You could not pick up the live performers and put this in like a different theater because that tech in that theater was built for this show. So uh, from a tech level, full five, five, five out of five. Nostalgia and popularity. You're gonna see Ariel, you're gonna see Snow White, you're gonna see the Lion King, you're gonna see Aladdin, you're gonna see Pocahontas, you're gonna see Elsa. I mean, you're, you're gonna, oh, spoiler alert, you're gonna see so many people. And a popularity perspective, Oh, this is a popular show. This is a huge stadium theater. And in fact, the stadium opens 90 minutes before the show starts. So if you want to get a solid seat, I recommend getting in line maybe 90, maybe two hours beforehand. Uh, th- th- that's just how it's working right now. Obviously, it was gone for a long time. It is back. And so people are super excited to see it. So lines are definitely longer for this. Uh, but I recommend getting there with plenty of time, grab a cocktail, grab some snacks, hang out in line, and yeah, so from a popularity and nostalgia, again, five out of five. Because it is a stadium theater show, there's, it's accessible for all, it is family friendly. Uh, it is later at night, but it's definitely family friendly. There is uh, differently abled and wheelchair and ECV uh, um, uh, seating locations everywhere. Uh, the, only, well, the only reason I'm gonna take a point away is because it's still that hard, gross, uncomfortable metal seats, benches. Why benches? Why are we Why are we still on benches? So for, for accessibility, I'll give it a four. And for must do this, if you can, if you can, if you can stay up this late, yeah, and I'm sure, I'm sure you rope drop, but if you can stick around all the way until the evening, I please, I promise you, it will be worth it. Five out of five, must do. This is what I tell people all the time. This is what you must do. You, 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 there are certain things you've got to check out at Hollywood Studios, but Fantasmic is a great way to end the night, even a great way to end your trip, because it's really, it, 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 it kind of puts a nice button on your entire experience. Remember all these characters you met throughout, the, uh, throughout your time here at Disney World, uh, and all the villains and all the conflict that was there, but it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter because magic is real, and hope is alive, and fireworks, and, Imagine anything is possible with imagination. Some imagination, huh? <laughs> Fireworks. See, we're five out of five must do. And that is why. That is the number one must do attraction here at Hollywood Studios. Woo! Well, that was a trip. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch us rank all the rides at Magic Kingdom. Bye.